I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. This is a tube and worm rig, and it's very popular for trolling for striped bass on the East Coast, maybe some other places as well. And this is what it's supposed to do, is corkscrew through the water like this. A lot of things happen too fast to appreciate um, in this video, so uh, where it makes sense to do so, I've slowed it down, uh, play it in slow motion. Okay, you wouldn't normally let the rig go to the bottom like this, but uh, it's just the way that I'm, I'm working this with the camera. Right off, we've got a fish there coming in from the left, but it's, it's, he's going to be hard to see. But we're going to get some better views in a second. I'll slow some of this down in a second. Uh, this next fish is a very serious striper. This is a very big fish. I'll get some hits during this video, uh, but I won't actually hook anything. I've got a hook protector on the hook. I really don't want to hook um, any of these bass in this area. There's a lot of boulders. could easily lose the camera. On my YouTube channel, I have a couple of nice videos of catching stripers on tube and worm from a kayak, and it also includes the rigging information. Alright, this is definitely the biggest one on the video, and, and this is a very big bass. So, up in the boat, I have, like, no clue that 95% of this is going on. Um, I actually thought there wasn't much down there based on the, you know, just the action on the rod. Now, I, I don't want to read too much into it because I know this is a very, very effective method and I do well with it. And yet, in going through the video, there's a lot of times where the fish just follow briefly and they turn off. And, you know, I got to wonder how much the camera has to do with this. So there's, you know, there's a hit. He's actually just got the worm there. Um, you know, the, you know, I've got a camera. This is a water wolf camera that's uh, running ahead of the the tube and worm, and you know, I don't know whether that has some impact on you know whether these guys want to hit or whether it puts them off a little bit. What I find interesting is on previous videos with other species of fish, uh, the fluke hit the camera. Bluefish literally try to eat the camera, and the bass uh, not coming so close. You would think that glob of weed on there would be a problem uh, that's on the lure, but that fish is actually going to turn around and come back and grab this thing. Alright, in the next 40 seconds or so, with varying quality, we're going to get to see four different species of fish. So that was a sea robin that came and looked at it. A 
pair of stripers just turned off on it. Now it's porgy time. And the porgy looks like he was chased away by a fluke. And the fluke's got it. Fluke has a heck of a time dealing with that spinning tube, though. But it gets it. Another porgy attack. Now the porgy's ripped the worm off, and we're going to keep the video running without the worm. And I think we're going to see three or four stripers come up at varying distances. Here comes one, he just turned right off. Uh, come up, look briefly, and then just turn away. And uh, you know, a lot of anglers will use real sandworms or blood worms, mostly sandworms, for this kind of fishing to tip the worms. Uh, I actually use Berkeley Gulp Alive, the molded blood worm, 6 inch, and I do very well on quality stripers. Most of the ones I get are roughly 10 to 30 pounds or some up to 40 pounds. And uh, you see the stripers turning off there with no worm. And what I really like about the uh, using the gulp as opposed to the real worms is, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of porgies around and they're just tremendous bait stealers. And, the gulp worm is a lot more resistant to the porgies. I find that times I had tried, that was a fluke that just hit the camera. Uh, times I've tried real worms, I've just been totally killed by the porgy. So uh, um, when I used gulp, I didn't find as though I really lost anything bass-wise, but I definitely uh, kept the porgy interference down to a minimum. So the clicking sound that you're hearing on the audio, you've probably guessed this by now, it's caused by that um, ball bearing swivel that's there in the foreground. And that's a really important part of this rig. Uh, you need a high quality ball bearing swivel. Uh, Tsunami makes this one. Um, you need it to really work well or else you're going to end up with a lot of twisting in your rig. And you know you can see why the way that lure twists. One thing I'm pretty impressed about as far as the Waterwolf camera is that um, it's able to handle the spinning of the tube and, and stay stable so it's uh that's pretty impressive the design uh so that water wolf camera one of the places you can buy that is j h tackle in oakdale long island both in the store and online so this is the proper action for these tubes uh it looks stupid to me i know the first time i ever dragged one of these things through the water i said you got to be kidding but I was already well aware of the productivity. Um, what's neat about this lure is it's something that pulls stripers middle of the day even when they're normally not feeding so well. Uh, it gets them to hit. I'm actually fishing in about 25 feet of water in uh, eastern Long Island Sound. And some other details. This is uh, a 15 inch tube from T-Man Custom Tackle and a typical trolling speed for this and the speed that I'm trying to achieve with the boat is uh, about two miles an hour is uh, pretty common and by two miles an hour you know you subtract a little bit if you are uh, going into the current add a little bit if you're going with the current uh, stuff like that's unavoidable and I know I'm gonna lose this camera eventually So what I found interesting about viewing this video, well, the big thing was how many bass were down there. Because, as I mentioned, you know, from up in the boat, I saw like, you know, just a couple of hits. And actually, I think probably the the best hit might have been uh, one of these fluke, not actually even a bass. Uh, so there were a lot more bass down there than I expected. Uh, I also thought it was interesting to see what they do. Is that they follow a little bit, not too long, like a fluke will follow forever. Bluefish seem to come in real fast. Bass follow a little bit, they don't come too close to the camera, and they seem to make a pretty quick decision as to whether they're going to hit or not. But just the number of fish down there that um, aren't hitting, it just you know really makes me think, you know, when you're fishing and you're not catching anything, uh, a lot of times you 
can make a conclusion that well, it's, they're just not around. And uh, boy, you see the porgies really tearing into that. You, know, you think there's just nothing around, and boy, running a camera down there really gives a different perspective to see that. Yeah, the fish are there, and they're, they're just not hitting. And you, know, you have to wonder how often is that the case? You know, the fish really are there, and they're just not interested, and they're they're not hitting your offering. And then you have to start thinking, you know, what can you do to make them hit? So I guess that's um, one of the fun parts about fishing. Okay, I hope you've uh, found this view into the striper's world to be interesting. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.